All righty then, let's do a live review. We're going to be doing the Reverie today from Tenacious TX Vapes and uh, and those people at Times Vape. Shall we see how this one is? Shall we? We've got a transition for an intro on a live review. Come on then. I really hope that works and it had noise and stuff. I really do. Anyway, today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at the reverie, as I uh, as I mentioned earlier on. So. <clears throat> I've got like multiple fans running in this office at the minute. So morning to those of you in chat. Um, hopefully, if you can hear that of, of multiple fans going, please do let me know and I'll turn them off. But um, but no, it's uh, it's another live one. Hopefully, we won't have any issues today. Touch wood, and we'll see how we get on. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop out my little chat as uh, as always. Few people are starting to come into the uh, into the review, which is nice. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so, as I mentioned, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be doing the review. So that means that we're not doing like a, a vlog or anything like that. So, any questions, if we can keep them relevant to the reverie, that would be splendid. Thank you very much indeed. So, let's get into this one, shall we? We'll see how we get on. Whoosh, ah, some of those apples. Look at that. What? Anyway, now the hint, we get these the right way up, Dave. So I have been using, since I've had this, which is quite some time, I've had this for nearly a month now, um, I have been using the black version, and that's mainly because I've wanted to uh, check the paintwork. Much like I said when it comes to the, uh, when I did the Nada, I've been checking the paintwork on this one. Now there is one deep annoyance with the black, but I'll come to that much, much later on. But uh, before we do anything else, let's get stuck into the, uh, the close-up of of what's going on with the reverie now I've got the the uh, the stainless one is in the packaging I've not touched it I've not played around with it I've done nothing with it because like I say for the last month nearly I've been working solely on the black one so jobs are flipping good and right then so when it comes to the box uh, nothing really too especially you've got a very funky kind of logo going on there very very 80s pop I think that reminds me of that kind of thing um, Got your normal warnings going on on there. Designed by Stan Tenacious TX Vapes. Go and check out his YouTube channel. Be Tenacious Times Vape. Engineered for vape. Dun dun dun. Um, and then we've got some of the uh, we've got some of the normal sort of social media stuff. So they're on those social media platforms. If you do want to go and check them out. Now underneath, under there, what we've got is you can see that it's showing this a 24 mil diameter. Unique and classy styling. You say. Unique and classy. Well, there you go. Simplified vertical build style, squonkable. Uh, Multi-port airflow with many options. We'll go through those when we go through them. Um, and the other stuff you can uh, you can have a little look at there. Removable juice well, which I think is a good idea. We'll check that out when we get there. But let's have a look and see what's in here. So we take out the box. We get a little we get a little kind of polishing cloth so you can you can clean your uh, your RDA. It's got a little Times Vape stamp on the bottom there. So uh, that's, that's, you know, that's nice. Um, now then, what else we got going on in here? We've got the RDA, which we'll come to momentarily. In here we do have an extra drip tip. This is an extra 810 drip tip in case you don't want to use the resin one provided. So they've got one of those puppies in there. We've got a couple of, I guess these are ceramic coiling rods. I mean, I've not really tried them to see if they are ceramic. I didn't really fancy burning them in case they weren't. But if not, then you do have uh, you do have a couple of coiling rods there as well. So let's have a little look at the sizes of these coiling rods, shall we? So the thick one is 3 mil, and the thin one is 2.5. So there we go. If you like your 3 mils and 2.5s, jobs are flipping good. Now then, um, in the extra spares, these are what we've got. <clears throat> Pull these puppies out. It is, in this office, it's just over 30 degrees at the minute. 30 degrees. 
This is it's ridiculous. So we've got an extra O-ring floating around in that bag there. We've got a little blue screwdriver. It's been a little while since I've seen one of those. Um, we've got a little O-ring. We've got a chunky O-ring and a couple of other thinner ones going on there. We've got the solid copper 510 pin. We've got a couple of extra post screws and we've got another small uh, O-ring in there as well. So jobs are good. Now then, I have used the black one in uh, squonking and in uh, in dripping mode. Uh, I've been dripping mode with it for the last maybe week and a half, something like that. Uh, that's why it's got the solid 510 pin. Now this solid 510 pin does protrude quite healthily. Got something in my eye. Um, does I've just seen the spider on my camera. Um, does protrude quite healthily so if you are looking for use of that on a hybrid mech such as the dreamer then certainly on the ones that i've got i have no problems with that whatsoever so jobs are good and there now then when it comes to the squonk pin it does have the squonk pin pre-loaded as you can see there now you've got a sort of a a, a flat screwdriver section for for uh, to take that in and out um, although it does have sides to it so it's going to stop the juice piddling out the side now i imagine this is gold plated this certainly isn't brass or copper which is good so uh, yeah i imagine this is gold plated now underneath there you can see that we've got a whole bunch of information um from Stan, there we go, manufactured by Times Vape. I guess that is the uh, the serial number, and uh, and jobs are good. There we go. So that's it. Nice little logo going on underneath there. Um, now on the top there, we do have the uh, the 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 drip tip, which. There we go. Get that puppy out. Now we do have on the uh, the stainless one or the polished one. It's a red one. On the black one, it's a green one. I think they might do another colour as well. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. Now then, let's go through the top. Now on the top section, this kind of flying saucer looking affair here is kind of it's 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 sharp. It's sharp considering this is your AFC controller to move the uh, move those air holes around with. This is not comfortable in the hand at all. I think it kind of it looks interesting. It might have an aspect because it goes out to the thin sort of section at the end. It might have an aspect of sort of heat sinking to some degree, but uh, it's very sharp. It is. I'd like to have seen that to not be sharp. Do you know what I mean? But uh, but there you go. That's that anyway. Now if we take Come out, you bugger. If we take that off the top, maybe. No, there we go. I'm lying to you. <laughs> I should have known that. You see, you see, you'd edit that out, wouldn't you? Um, when you take that off the top, you do want to make sure that you're careful on those O-rings because, uh, as you can see, I've just taken this one off. I've not used it, and uh, even though I twisted it when I took it off, that O-ring is pretty damn wrecked. Now then, these O-rings aren't the best, but I'll go through that a little bit later on. But it does mean that essentially you are, you are turning this. I'm going to try and get this so you can see it. In fact, what I'll do is I will pop it on my, my little jobby there. Okay, and so you can, the airflow options, you can see, oh, I just have to twist this all the way around. Where are we? Where's the old? There it is. So we've got one hole open right there at the moment. We then twist it. Two holes. Three and two. Three and three. Three and two. Two and one and one so one of the things i do like about this airflow is depending if you want your airflow at the bottom of the coil or at the top of the coil i think that's that's a pretty pretty good idea so i, I kind of like what we've got here with this uh, with this kind of funky let's a rhomboid when that's a square that's the when it's an oblong is that is that rhomboid anyway um that's uh, that's that uh, that's what we've got to look at there so let's just twist that airflow off again try not to wreck the uh, the insides anymore now you can see in there that we do have an interesting deck i'm sure a lot of you have seen this already but it is certainly a very very interesting deck but more kind of in your face is the fact that these air holes are going in and you've got these kind of plinths where you've got this to to, to push it push the air around where your coil is now the top of these are bowed in you can see that so any anytime you're dripping with this any extra juice will eventually go down into the rda which is good um but uh, but there we go. So it's sort of minimising the chamber in there, um, which is a good idea. Does that restrict you from doing dual coil? Is it just single coil? Well, I'll show you that in a little while, as long as this doesn't go on too long. Now then, what I'm going to do is take off that 
Come off. Come off. I don't want to wreck any more O rings. Come off. Come off. Come off. It does have a little notch system in there, and that provides me with a little bit of frustration as well. But we'll talk about that momentarily. Now, it does feel like I don't think there's machine oil in there. I don't think, but nonetheless, when you get yours, I would run it through a uh, run it through a, an ultrasonic or something along those lines to start with, or sort of a hot water bath, you know. Um, but this is what we've got for the deck. So it is a single coil, vertical coil as well. Uh, your lower leg goes into this one, upper leg goes into this one. It fires in the the screw at the side, which is a very very good thing because then if you're using Claptons and the like, it doesn't twist your wire, which I think is very very good. Now then. I, I'm not a fan of uh, single coils, but like I say, I will look at that in a little while. Now, this one's little party piece is the fact that you've got this kind of knurl oh, knurling on the bottom here. And that means you can get a grip of that so you can actually take out your full juice well, if you like. So you've got the build deck as a separate entity. And that means that when you're putting your single coil in there, it's a little bit easier to get some pliers underneath there to pull your wick down and through it. So that makes life just a little bit easier. An interesting idea. Not sure I've seen that one before, but there you go. It's good. Uh, you do have an O-ring that goes on here. So when you do pop it back into your, uh, into your juice well and screw that right on, you can hold those little knurled sections. You can get a good purchase either side of these posts and really kind of yank it in there to make sure that that seals nice and tightly. So jobs are good in there. Now, like I said, that's about it. So it is pretty damn simple. But like I said, is is this just for single coils? Well, I, ages ago, ages ago, I actually put a, uh, a uh, dual coil in this and I will show you how I did that as well. One of the last things to show you is there is a little clip in the back here and that means that on the, uh, on the, 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 the sort of secondary or the, the first top, cap that goes on not a clip a little nipple that goes into that little dugout section there which is good however it's that the annoying thing with this is I really wish they'd have put that on both sides you know they didn't even need to put this on both sides but just in the cap one on both sides would have made me super happy particularly with the black one it's incredibly difficult to see um, where that little thing is so you, you, you're sort of you're putting it on there and you're trying to line it up and you're trying to get it all in there and all that sort of stuff it just would have made sense to me to have that little cutout on both sides on both this side and that side you get me you get me good um the only other thing, like I was saying earlier on about the air, the, the airflow control, this is the black one. And, and this happens, this isn't just for this RDA, this happens with, with all RDAs. Um, but uh, if they're black on black, trying to see when you've got those airflow holes open and closed is an absolute nightmare. If you've not got perfect light and great vision, you have a complete pain in the ass of a time. But that's, let's say, it's not relevant to just the Reverie, it's relevant to all black on black kind of RDAs that I've come across. Um, now, the other thing with this black RDA is you do see a lot of juice build up. I mean, if you do over drip or if you do over juice, it just, it just covers it and it makes it look quite annoying which is uh, which is a bit frustrating now with the black one more so than the, uh, the, the 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 polished one the stainless one and that's because remember I said about that o-ring now you can see here that there is look at that amount of juice that's collected now that's going to have been collected from um, the condensation I guess that goes between the top cap and that airflow also with any juice and condensation that runs past this o-ring and so that means that when you do put your juice when you put this back on again you're putting that on and then that you can see that I just cleaned it and it, it sort of squishes out extra juice along that seam so that that's something that uh, you do have to be very very aware of because it's you know for the black I think it's more annoying on the black than it is the uh, the stainless one but that's just my personal opinion but be aware of that it would have been nice to have seen this I don't know double o-ringed or, or or something so it, it would kind of you know I don't know I don't know how you stop that oops, stop that condensation collecting in there um, but uh, but yeah it's it's just just one of those annoying kind of things just because it if you if you worry about how these things look then uh, 
then you know you just get juice in it the whole time which is which is a little bit of a pain in the bum but anyway moving on moving past that one let's get a build in here now i said i would show you how to do a dual coil build didn't i now I know, um, I know this is known as a single coil atomizer, but uh, that doesn't mean that we're restricted. So I'm going to show you how I do it, but uh, I will pop a, uh, a regular single coil Clapton in there as well. Now then, let me just get, should have got my tools out in preparation, but you know me, we've been doing this long enough to, uh, to know that that's, that's just not likely to happen. So I'm going to unscrew these, these post screws coming in the side here. Now that does mean that those holes are massive. So you can put some hellishly large wires in there, which is great. But at the same time, if you do want to uh, close that down, you can see that that screw is taking up a lot of real estate in that hole. So capturing other size wires isn't super, super difficult, which I think is, is very, very good. So there we go. They, they've done that, those sort of tolerances rather, rather well. Now then, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use some 26 gauge um, and just uh, and show you one of the one of the ways that I've done it. I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, how tos or whatever on uh, or people showing you their marvelous work on Instagram. But uh, let me show you how I've done it, just so you're aware. In case it's the sort of thing that tickles your taste buds, does it provide any extra flavour? Not really. I'm not going to lie to you, not really. It doesn't really do, it doesn't really sort of enhance the experience that much for me, other than, you know, you're going to go through juice a little bit quicker than if you've got a single coil. But, uh, but no, there you go. Right, now, I am going to go through, I think I, I think I used two and a half. I'm pretty sure I used two and a half mil last time. Let me just check. Yes, two and a half mil. Loads of room, loads of room. There is actually a surprising amount of room in this little puppy. So um, you can, you have got builders, I'm sure, are going to love this, like Instagram builders and people that like to put bonkers wires and stuff in things. I'm sure will uh, will find this very, very handy indeed. But uh, but let's have a go. Right. So and this. This is just a, a quick kind of how-to. Now, the first coil I'm going to wrap, I'm going to wrap overhand. So I'm going to wrap this on a, in a clockwise position. So let's just do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm sure I could use I could use um, 26 gauge as well. In fact, I might have used 26 gauge last time. This does look a little bit on the thinner side, but you know shits and giggles so I've got that coil that one's been wrapped overhand now what I'm going to do with this one is wrap this one underhand so anti-clockwise yes all right one two three four five six seven eight nine gravy so here we go I mean I really like 26 gauge I like 26 gauge in Clapton's I like 26 gauge in uh, um, in parallel form and uh, I like 26 gauge in dual coils particularly because you tend not to have to kind of go crazy on the on the heat with them you know you feel me you feel me uh, right now then let's just get this shit sorted I'm sure I had some more things somewhere, but I don't know what I've done with them. Let's have a go. Let's have a go. Now, why did I wrap them? Let's zoom in again. Why did I wrap them one one way and one the other? Well, that's basically because I want these to run back to back, but I still want to make sure that I have a, uh, a lead on the top and a lead on the bottom. So you can see what we've got going on there. That just means to me that we've got, um, we, it's nice and easy to be able to get these installed because if you just throw them in like so, then you're gonna have two, you're gonna, well, four wires, but two legs on each side that you've got to worry about, which is just a little bit of a pain in the dick to be honest with you. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna grab, try and grab those ends like so. And then I'm going to just give these a twist. Let's not grab them overly well, but let's see how we get on. Right. 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 
So what, what I'm going to do then is you just then tighten, tidy that up a little bit, but twist those legs together like so. And, uh, and uh, you can do the same on the bottom. And this will make our dual coil. You can use this technique for a bunch of other sort of single coilers as well, if you really, really want to. Let's see if I grab them with these instead. Will that grab? Let's try. And it's untidy because I'm not doing it very carefully, but there we go. We've got two lots of wires, jobs are good. And, and then what you just do is you'll get that, you'll plonk that in there. Fill that up where you want that to be. Tighten up your leads. Like so. And then all you've got to do is tidy up the coil. Where's my... Where's my thingy stick? Anyone know what I've done with my thingy stick? I found it. Calm down. Oh no, I did two and a half, didn't I? Tight. Right. Righty ho. Then. Nearly there. Nearly there. Now when you're doing this, you don't really want those legs to be touching, uh, or those coils to be touching rather. Um, but uh, what this does mean is when it gets to a point of doing the, um, when it gets to the point of doing the wicking, you can then wrap you, you can sort of have one side of the wick come out each side of the, uh, of the deck there, which kind of makes life a little bit easier. But uh, that's all you've got to worry about. Try and centralise it as much as you can, and jobs are good. And then when you pop your uh, top cap on, once you get it the right way around, I haven't got the base on, idiot. But you can, that kind of gives you an idea of how much space we've still got going on in there. So there's still quite an amount of space. If you do, do want to dual coil it, you can, and uh, and jobs are good. So hopefully that helps out somebody somewhere. So that's the thing. But for today, let's go and pop this single coil in. So I'm just going to put a single coil collapsing in, probably like every other reviewer on the planet. But there you go. Like I said, not really noticed a huge amount of benefit for dual coiling this one. Um, but uh, that's how I have been doing it when uh, when that's sort of tickled my fancy. Really, that's when it's tickled my fancy. Um, now, in Stan's presentation video, which I've linked down below, uh, I think he put a three and a half mil coil in there, which I've got no problems with. I've got no problems with that whatsoever. So three three and a half mil is is fairly kind of standard. I think. Um, I think you could get away if you wanted to put like a big honk and great four mil coil in there you could do that and you'd still have plenty of space but uh, but there we go so for today what i'm going to do is i am actually just going to put a three mil just because i like the way a three mil performs so uh, let's get one of these made up shall we da -da 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 -da. hope you're all doing well i hope you're all dealing if you're in the uk i hope you're all dealing with the uh, the heat at the moment i certainly have not been i was ill as buggery yesterday right one two three four five six okay, okay. all right so as always one out one under both coming out along the same plane though just makes life nice and easy then all you got to do is you just doink your coil in, like so, and then you worry about tightening them up. One. I like to have just a little bit of tension on that bottom leg. And we are good to go. 
So that's the uh, the Clapton installed there. Installed there. That's two dual 26 gauge stainless steel uh, wrapped with 36 or 38 on the outside canthal. And so essentially, like we did before with the two uh, the two cores or the two coils with with um, 26 gauge we've done basically the same thing but put it into a clapton with a few less wraps so yeah, yeah there you go so performance wise you can expect similar sort of performance once you've done that then you just finagle it so your coiling rod is basically over the top of the uh, over the top of the the um the the squonk hole or the 510 you can see that there if you look oh got a little spider got a little spider yay me for not freaking out Right, hang on, get rid of the spider. Done. Um, so yes, so you just finagle that to, to be on top of where your uh, your um, your 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 five ten is, and jobs are flipping good. And that's it. Right, let's get these cut off, shall we? I feel like we're motoring through this a little bit quicker than the last live one. I feel like we are. I don't know if we are. I don't know how long we've been going for, but. I'm feeling good. I feel good. Da -da, da -da. 0.26 that's coming out at the moment until I fire this bad boy up. Now, if you do do this without having the, uh, the, 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 the juice well on, then obviously please make sure you don't touch the, 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 the posts and stuff while you're, while you're uh, firing it up. That would be very silly indeed. Now the problem that, or not the problem, the thing that I'm I'm not a huge fan of, of with this one, is the fact that when you do put the wick in there, your wick has to, it either has to go down to sort of one side, or you have to split the wick, um, so it kind of you have half going down each side, you know, and that to me is just it's just a bit frustrating. It's a bit annoying. It's a bit frustrating, and I don't, I don't really like it. Um, oh. My desk is getting sticky. It's that hot that the desk is getting sticky. What the fuck's that about? Um, right, now then. 25 minutes, not bad, not bad. Uh, so I am going to be using some of this Cotton God stuff again. I've been using this a lot recently to, to sort of test it. And uh, I don't know, I don't know. Is it any better than Cotton Bacon or any of the others? I don't really know. It feels weird. It feels really sort of <laughs> synthetic-y. But it's not it's not like cellular cotton or anything like that, do you know what I mean? Right, let's see. Because it's old school, you've got to kind of guess amount about your your wicking amount. Give that a little bit of a, one of them. I think this is gonna to be too much wick. It is gonna to be too much wick. Let's take a little bit of that off. And away we go. Oh look, Todd's in. Hello Todd. Hello, mate. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. Right, I need to, uh, to. Somebody asked earlier on if, if it looked awful on a uh, on a on a dreamer. So let me find my dreamer so I can show you. There we go. Once it's been built up, I will pop it on said dreamer. Jobs are flipping good. Right, now. Oh, let's, have a, let's have a little vape. Let's have a little vape, see if the vapor cools it down. Just have a chance to look quickly at the chat there to see if I've missed any questions. If you do have any questions about the reverie, not about random stuff, it's not a vlog, but about the reverie, then uh, then uh, please start it at vaping biker and then if you put your question in uppercase that makes my life easier good stuff i haven't seen any questions in there for the moment so let's just is that yeah if i get that's close enough right now then when it comes to to getting this wick in this is where it's it kind of i'm, I'm unsure i think it makes life easier <laughs> Oh, that 510 is still a bit warm. Uh, uh. So, this is what we've got once we take it out. We haven't got the juice well on it. Am I stopping this? Is the gantry moving? The gantry's moving a little bit. Sorry if it makes you feel sick or if it made feel sick before. But uh, there we go. That's that. We're all we're all lined up. We're sort of trimmed back super easily. Jobs are good. In. 
Um, where do you get the cotton god? As I said earlier on, evolution vaping. So I'm now going to pop this into here. And then I need some tweezers. And coming through. Oops. Might be a little bit too much wick in there, but it's going to be snug. There we go. That's all right. Now I'm going to cut it off. Actually, no, I'm going to put the, uh, what do I do with it? There it is. There is the juice well. We'll screw that bad boy in there. Feel me now, bad boy. Ari. Right, get that up there. And tighten that up so that's nice and snug. Now, like I said earlier on, this is going to mean that your all of your wick is going to go on one side unless you fanny around and kind of split the wick so it goes a bit of each. But you can see that you don't really have, depending on where you place your coil, of course, you're not going to have a huge amount of space under there to be doing that with, which is, you know, a little bit, a little bit annoying, a little bit annoying. But, uh, but there we go. Anyway, what we'll do is we will slice off that there. Slice it off. I tend to slice this maybe a hint below or around about the top of where the uh, the top post goes to finish. Uh, now I need my little pointy stick. My little pointy stick. Anyone know what I've done? With my little pointy stick. Is there somewhere? There it is. Found it. Calm down. Oops. Oops. Right. Now I'm just going to thin out this cotton just a wee bit. Because the reason I'm not well. I'll go into it in a little while, but you know, it's just the wicking. For me, a vertical coil wicks 50% less efficiently than uh, than a, uh, a horizontal coil because you've only got one end of the wick in the juice. Now then, that's absolutely relevant when you are um, when you're squonking because obviously the juice is going to come up from underneath. However, when you are when you're uh, when you're dripping, you're dripping directly onto the top. And then that juice goes down onto the bottom, so it kind of it gets there a little bit easier. But just be aware of the fact that that uh, when you're squonking, it, you may not be able to squonk hit, squonk hit, squonk hit. You know, you might have to squonk, give it a second because that juice has to then wick all the way up to the top of that coil to make sure that you're good and gravy. Open biker likes like it looks like it'll have quite a restrictive draw. The chamber is quite small and starting to have certain thoughts. We are not there yet, my friend. We are not there yet. Now then. I uh, I got a bunch of this. I got a bunch of Dark Star one-shot flavors recently, so we'll try this fruit fusion. I've not tried this yet, but I'd have thrown it all into the uh, into the squonker in preparation for this review. So we'll see how we get on. I'm hoping because I've gone hardcore with it. I'm hoping that it's not going to taste horrible. I'm just popping a bunch of juice on here, just to make sure that it can get into. Get itself into wicking. I'm going to pop a little tiny bit of juice around the uh, the O-rings. While I've got that out, I'm going to juice up this top slightly knackered O-ring as well. And I'm going to wipe all the juice off my hands. Right, I need a little sip of juice. Not that juice, but this juice. Jobs are flipping good and now then, what did you all think of the uh, the intro right at the start, with the with the graphics and the music and stuff? Was it cool? Was it cool? Did it work out well? Okey cokey. So we are on a, a bastion, and what we can do, you can see that as soon as I squonk, that juice tends to want to go out onto this side of the deck because that's where the the, the kind of the path of least resistance is because this side has got all of the uh, of the wick. So that's what I mean about being able to. If you do split the wick, you've got more of a chance. But it's you, I think you have to raise your coil up a little bit higher in order for that to happen. Now then, let's get this uh, this this first top cap in place, making sure that we get the little the little nipple hole over the top of the nipple.
There we go. We're in place. And you can see at this point that uh, about how much space we've got in between that coil. I could have moved that coil like half a mil over to the side, just a little bit closer. But you can see what's going on with that airflow. And this is why I think it's a good thing that if you do like a more restricted airflow, you can close off sort of the top holes. So you have sort of more of the bottom holes kind of putting that focus into the, uh, the, the coil, which I think is a good thing. Now then, much like we've seen before with the, uh, with the, with the uh, what was it called? Recurve. Um, because you've got a huge kind of dense tube, if you like, there. I think these are about, I think these are about one and a half mil, these holes. Let me just check. Yeah, about one and a half mil for each one of these air holes. Um, it's they're, they're, they're big enough to allow a decent amount of airflow, but they're small enough to allow surface tension of your juice to stop that going outside. Now, that's obviously going to be very dependent on how thin your juice is. If it's like a high PG, then uh, you've got more of a chance of leaking on any of these kind of atomizers. But what we'll do is I will, uh, I will over squonk like a mofo. Right, up we go. That was all the way up. You could see it just starting to come at the top there. And that's, you know, we've not got leakage going on the sides there, which I think is good. So once again, we can squonk it all the way up. Oosh. We're pretty much covering that whole coil there. We certainly went over the bottom of that negative post, or whatever post that is at the bottom. And job's good. So that's it. Now we've got to worry about getting the, uh, the top cap on without wrecking that any further. And away you go. Now, I do think that once this top, this very top cap is on, it is it is pretty loose. It is pretty loose. You don't kind of twist it with your mouth on the drip tip, but you do twist it fairly freaking easily. So because of all of that squonking, I'm now I'm now dripping. I'm now getting juice everywhere. Don't hold your your fucking don't over squonk things and then hold it on its side. Just a little pro tip for you there. Right. Let's get on. Let's get it on. Ooh, let's get it on. Right, drip tip, we'll need one of them. Now, airflow, fully open. Fully open, that's six holes a side open. And uh, I've, got juice. I've got juice coming out, I've got juice coming out. Let's see how we get on, shall we? 55.5 watts. That juice is quite interesting. Um, let me just move that fan down or off rather. It is a restricted airflow. Now, I know someone's going to ask me, so um, was I bright enough to have a recurve here as well? So I know someone was going to ask. Uh, no, no, no. It turns out I'm just not that clever. Have I got the recurve on something? I had a recurve here somewhere, but it is a restricted airflow. It is you, you're not kind of hardcore angry bad boy clouds. That is that's just not the case with this RDA. Flavor, however, is not bad. It's not bad. Thought it was going on the Dreamer. I will put it on the Dreamer in a minute. I wanted to show you it's squonking first. Calm your tits. Calm your tits. Point is me putting the black one on the silver Dreamer, isn't it? Eh? Right, hold you on. So, that's it with that drip tip. Now, the drip, these drip tips, I'm not entirely, don't know, don't know how I feel about them, to be honest with you. Don't know how I feel about them. They are a little bit thinner on the outside than a lot of other drip tips that we've seen of late. Um, and it's quite, it's quite short and dumpy. So, my voluptuous kissable lips tend to be kind of touching on that top cap the whole time. So, that is something to be aware of. Um, I've got... I've got one of Mike Vapes, if you like your kind of your, your, your wide kind of drip tips going on there. I've got one of Mike Vapes um, drip tips happening right there from his intake. Are we going to focus? There we go. Um, it doesn't fit overly well. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't really fit overly well. But uh, but there you go. Now, you do have the, the space that you've got if you want to see about your, uh, your kind of your... Um, aftermarket drip tips. The space that you've got before it goes up is... Oh, come on. Come on, try not to be shaky. Is about 15 mil. 
about 15, 15 and a half mil. Um, and that will make sure that the outer of your drip tip will kind of fall in line with that. Any wider than that and your aftermarket drip tip will have a little gap because obviously this section drops down. So there you go. There you go. Um, let me get let me get the one that comes with in there again. And let's have a little toot again. I'd say flavour and stuff is all right. Certainly not a bad, not a bad idea. You do have a little sort of concave area underneath that top cap. Um, now, if I restrict that down, so I'm closing off three of the air holes. Uh, sorry, I've got th three on one vertical side and then two air holes showing. That does make a difference, obviously, but not a drastic one. And then if I drop it off, so I've then got two and one. That's massively restricted. <laughs> massively, massively restricted. Um, if I go all the way down to one, it's a very like ridiculously tight um, lung hit, but a, like a super loose mouth to lung. But I, would I suggest this for a uh, for a uh, a mouth to lung? No, probably not. In all honesty, I'm not going to lie to you. Whilst you can have that lower airflow at the bottom, which is where you want it, if you're just going to have one or three airflow holes open, um, so that air comes in and then it'll go up the side of the coil. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Whilst he has reduced the chamber size massively, uh, that sort of on that top with that kind of machining in of that top cap, I think if you really kind of were to reduce that too much, I think it'd feel a little bit funky. Now, the other thing that I didn't get on mine was a 510 drip tip reducer. So I dare say a lot of people have got 810 to 510 adapters floating around, which I guess you probably could use. But but no, I don't think this is a mouth to lung device. This is, this is a lung hitter, but um, not a super hardcore, angry, cloudy one. Jobs are good. Now then, for those of you that wanted to know what it looked like on the Dreamer Mech, let me pop it on here for you. Dun, dun, dun. Now this is only a 24, obviously, and the top of the Dreamer hits at 25. So... Let me just zoom in a bit on that one so you can see what's going on. And there we go. It doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look terrible. We've got lots of uh, logo-y things going on there. I mean, I'd, I'd be okay rocking it, to be honest with you. But, uh, but there you go. So that's what it looked like on the Dreamer as a uh, as a setup like that. Not awful. Not awful at all. Oh, ooh, that's a bit close. Oh, we don't want that. Oh, no. Right. Good. Happy? Happy. So, what do I think of it? I don't know. Don't know. I've had it. I've had it for a, a bloody month, and I still don't know. Um, I, th I is it changing my opinion on vertical coils? Never liked vertical coils in the past, and uh, and I told Stan I'm not a vertical coil person when I saw him at Expo this year, and you know. I still think I still think a vertical coil has a harder time wicking. So if you're going to put like a high temp coil through there, so a big old thick, you know, barbed wire stapled hedgehog spine dragon bastard coil. When if you're going to put something like that in there, then I think you know it could have a hard time if you try and put that power up too much because that is a restricted airflow you're not going to have enough airflow in there to really cool that down um, and so it's going to really work hard at taking a lot of the juice out of the wick and that means that if you're squonking that juice has to sort of work really hard to try and get up to the top again if you're dripping once again and, and this is why i've been dripping the black one quite a lot is because if you do drip it you're dripping straight in that top you kind of bang a load of juice in there you're getting it in the, the top of the wick as well as at the bottom and I think it works a little bit better for for if you're going to go kind of a little bit angrier coil in that respect but you know I mean it doesn't it doesn't blow me away it, the flavor isn't kind of you know unbelievable but like I said last time at the uh, with the Nada review um, I think we're at a point where um, there are a lot of a lot of RDAs now that kind of produce a similar flavour, and so trying to trying to sort of one up that, I think I think we've maxed it out, guys. I think we've we've kind of maxed out where we're going when it, when we come to flavour. To be honest with you, um, but uh, but there you go. That's it. Now then, I guess I guess we better see how much they are, because hey, guess what? 
I didn't, I didn't, I didn't sort that out. Um, let's have a wee look here. Hold, hold on a moment, will you? Got to sort my thing out. Uh, screen and face. That's that's the one that I need. <whistles> right, hold on. Let me get the sizes right. Who uh, misses? Right, I think we're good. So, if I go, whoosh, look at that. What? Pro, pro transitions. Right, let's have a little look. Reverie RDA. Whoosh. Boom. So, Evolution Vaping in the UK, $24.99. They are at Heaven's Gifts as well. SR Vapes in the UK, $23.99 to $24.99. Um, my Vapor Store, $24.99. So, there you go. Three, three, whoever these are, 3A Vape, 30 bucks. Um, so, you know, you're looking at around about the 25 to 30 smackaroos, which is not... It's not an excessive amount of money. Not an excessive amount of money at all. So if you want to try something with a single coil, with a vertical single coil, and you've not tried it from before, then, uh, you know, worth a blast. Worth a blast. Like I said, you can put your dual coils in there, like I showed you earlier on. Um, you can put a whole bunch of different wires in there as well. And uh, I've not really had any issues with any of them. It doesn't blow me away. And, uh, and, and, and part of that is because, particularly, like I said, with the black one, that O-ring that kind of gets, you know, reasonably, it feels like it's reasonably loose going on in there. Um, and then just... When you when you squash it down, it just <clears throat> you juice out of the side there, which is a bit of a bit of a bummer. However, that's just me, and you know you guys may feel completely differently about that. From ease of coiling, piece of piss, piece of piss. So easy, it's ridiculous. Um, easy to wick, easy to coil. Um, Flavour is on par with a bunch of other RDAs out there. It is a restricted lung hit, so you're not going to be going you know hardcore crazy mad for days. Um, in fact. Let me just have a have a try of something. I would say it's it's not a million miles away from the from the restriction that you get from the intake wide open. There we go. That's that's that one. Okay, so were those coils two and a half or three? The uh, the two coils, the dual coils, it was two and a half. The single coil was three. Um. Good. Right. I don't think there's any other questions. So I think we're done and dusted, aren't we? I think we are. So that's it. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. I do appreciate you uh, you, uh, you being there. Thank you. Thank you for very much. If you've not subscribed, please make sure you do subscribe. Obviously, there is the Patreon down in the bottom if you want to support the channel as well as PayPal if you want to do a one-off support. But thank you very much, and I will see you again very, very soon. All right. I am going to, I've got my normal outro, but I'm going to play my funky one, my, my intro. I'm going to play it as an outro again just because I think it's cool. <laughs> I made it this morning. Right. I will see you later on. Have it larger!